Thanks to SpaceX, a rocket launch isn't rare, but a Canadian one would be. Doing this in a commercial way is what's really important about this, uh, and this is going to be the first step to unlocking that for Canada. Nordspace hopes to be the first all-Canadian company to build and launch a rocket from Canadian soil. You know, we got to the absolute last step, we pressed the button ready for launch, and it looks like it might have been like a small software glitch or something related to uh, us detecting a misfire in the ignition system. So, not exactly what they'd hoped, but still, this is a first step to compete in an industry that, yes, Elon Musk's SpaceX has made cheaper, faster, more reliable than ever before. But I'll explain why Canada may have a shot to break out from under that shadow. And the goal is closer to Earth than you might think. The frontier we're talking about here isn't the moon or Mars. In today's space economy, the lucrative zone is low Earth orbit. Let me show you the neighborhood a little. Here's the Earth, of course. Way out here, as far as 36,000 kilometers up, you have communication and radio satellites, beaming TV signals to satellite dishes. Closer in, around 20,000 kilometers up, there are your GPS satellites, the signals your car or phone or smartwatch rely on. But way closer, you have a zone called LEO, low Earth orbit. Just a few hundred kilometers up, and that's where you'd find the Hubble Space Telescope, the International Space Station, and critically, most of the satellites humans have ever launched. There's a lot of interest in LEO right now, and it's the area that is now, I guess, the heart of the, the space economy, if you want to call it that. Being close to the Earth lets you transmit faster. Uh, if you are a company that is doing Earth observation with a satellite, being a lot closer in low Earth orbit makes your data higher resolution and thus more valuable. And some Canadian companies see that value too of getting into the satellite economy in a bigger way. We need to get a way to, to access that orbital economy to benefit from it. See it that way. There's going to be anywhere between 600 to 1,000 jobs created launching Canadian satellites and liftoff. Go Starlink, go SpaceX. Starlink, SpaceX's own satellites that provide internet connectivity, is the biggest player in low Earth orbit. I think at this point, about maybe approaching 80% of all active satellites in orbit are SpaceX. And by dominating that zone, Starlink has helped people get online who have never had that kind of high-speed access. From the capital of Niger to rural communities here in Canada, the company says as many as 400,000 Canadians are active customers. It's even helped Ukrainian soldiers in the war against Russia. The Ukrainian troops need Starlink's satellites to communicate with each other and wouldn't be able to fight Russia without it. The reason Starlink works so effectively is low Earth orbit. It's a zone that takes less time to beam high-speed data back and forth. And for SpaceX, that side of the business is booming. One industry analysis company estimated of the more than $13 billion that SpaceX made in revenue in 2024, just over $8 billion was from Starlink, a service that added more than 2 million subscribers year over year. While making and launching rockets is a profitable business, a good business, there's just not as much demand for that as there is for the internet. They are really the big player in town providing, uh, you know, internet services uh, to a lot of customers. And uh, the rival companies that want to compete with it are starting now to launch their systems, but they've got a long way to go to catch up. And think about this, those rivals like Amazon or European telecoms company Utelsat, they're using SpaceX rockets to compete because they don't have a regular, reliable, or relatively affordable way to launch. And in a decade, one estimate from Goldman Sachs predicts the low Earth orbit economy is going to be worth more than $100 billion. That future will need way more launch capacity. And it has to do with another quirk of where these satellites go. And you can see that if we go back to the neighborhood. Way up there with the GPS and comm satellites, there's little to no atmosphere. But in low Earth orbit, there's a thin, thin layer. Not as much as, say, birds and planes deal with, but some, which eventually drags the speeding satellite right back down to Earth, giving it effectively an expiration date. There's a significant headwind that makes the satellites spiral in. And for this and other reasons, the LEO satellites typically have a lifetime 
as maybe like five years before you replace them. So the challenge then becomes if a company wants to compete, getting up there is one thing. To keep competing, you need to be launching replacements every five years. But some experts say even though SpaceX has made the launching part more accessible than ever, there's a wait. There is a congestion in spaceport in the US. Uh, so basically there are lacking place to, to launch. And so Canada is uh, very well uh, positioned. A crowded launch pad is one reason for why businesses and governments may want options other than SpaceX for getting their satellites into orbit. But there's another worth looking at. This is the chainsaw for bureaucracy. Chainsaw! Remember that? Feels like ages ago, but Elon Musk's time in the early months of Donald Trump's second administration hasn't been without consequence. Tesla has reported its steepest drop in quarterly revenue in over a decade. I bought this before Elon went crazy. One man in Georgia is so displeased with Musk that he took the Tesla decals off of his car. And a survey from March, several months into Musk's efforts to make the US government more efficient, asked Americans what they thought the top visible brands were and how they felt about them. Their thoughts about Musk's companies? Well, you have to scroll to the bottom of this Harris and Axios polling data. X ranked 98th place out of 100 brands, Tesla at 95, and at 86, SpaceX, a company that was in the top five back in 2021. So a reputational hit, but also to SpaceX's bottom line. Allying with Donald Trump also cost Starlink some Canadian clients as the US threatened tariffs on Canada, Ontario Premier Doug Ford canceled a $100 million contract with Starlink that was supposed to connect thousands of people. I can't support someone hell bent on destroying our province, taking food off people's tables, destroying the economy. I think his involvement in the government obviously made a lot of people upset in the United States. And then his departure from the government and his uh, criticisms of President Trump made a lot of other people uh, upset with him. So. Uh, he is a polarizing person and continues to be polarizing, and I, I don't foresee that stopping anytime soon. And it's that distrust of Musk, coupled with his closeness to the Trump administration that's in a trade war with Canada, that's where some companies here see an opening. It's safe to say that getting into rockets isn't something company leaders wake up one day and decide to do. The ones looking to do in Canada what SpaceX does in the US, they've been testing their capabilities for years. A couple of these companies see a few factors coming together now. One, we've explained, bringing that business, those jobs, to Canada. We can decide to create those jobs here in Canada. Uh, or we create them abroad uh, because we are shipping those satellites on uh, other rockets and, and, and launching those satellites on board the foreign rockets. Two, the retention of rocket talent. Right now, there aren't a lot of places where rocket engineers can work in that field in Canada. The education we have, the universities we have, it's outstanding. Our engineers are as good as any engineers in the US and Europe, and you want to be able to give those engineers um, a path for their dreams and their, amb and their ambitions. But three, and this is a big point, self-reliance. As Canada tries to be more diversified and independent from the US, this is another chance at a homegrown industry. We used to fly our flag real high and talk about sovereign capabilities, and people used to think that was a little strange. Uh, suddenly, it's a cool thing to do. Canadians really are realizing why investing in Canada, building in Canada, is as important as we think it is. So can Canada actually compete in Musk's satellite kingdom? Maybe, but what's clear, nothing happens overnight. It's a good starter project for Canada and for a Canadian uh, industry, I think, to try and break into that small rocket, small satellite market to learn the ropes before maybe down the road, uh, building more ambitious vehicles. Nord Space, the company that hopes to launch out of Newfoundland, needed millions in self-financing and it may require a lot more private and public investment to get Canada in a position where it's seen as an attractive and reliable place to launch fully capable rockets. 
Building space technology is very hard. Um, nobody really makes it look easy. Even SpaceX obviously blows up a lot of vehicles trying to do that. These are multi-year endeavors. Uh, and even after the first launch to orbit, there are usually many years of fine tuning and making sure the rocket is reliable and being able to produce them uh, as fast as you want them. At any rate, it's worth remembering that any space program past or present, knows that you don't get there without a lot of funding and some failures too.